Hello everybody and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out something called Conquest by developer Outlands Games. It's a bit of an odd role to be cast in, I have to admit. Uh, essentially what we're going to be doing in this one is we're cast as the role of an intergalactic graveyard maintenance worker or something to that effect, where essentially we're going to be running the line between sort of a passive exploration experience where we just kind of take in the environment sights and sounds, and also there's a little bit of a narrative-driven component as well, uh, and the two kind of converge in an interesting way. And I have to say, honestly, the art direction and design of this one is rather interesting all in and of itself. So it's a few good things going forward. I should mention also, though, there are some F-bombs dropped in this one again. Uh, I did mention that on the last episode that it happened in, so I figure it might as well be consistent here. Nothing particularly bad or anything, just if you're sensitive to strong language, I guess, you know, be aware. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, look around see what we can find here. So, not many controls, E to examine, arrows or WASD to move, and we've got a year, of course, for uh, Outlands Games 2014. So, looking about, we've got a, well, it looks like a fairly generic-looking texture mesh with some peaks and valleys and such, sort of a lunar landscape. And then over to the side, you'll notice a lot of abstract, very interesting and strange design things going on. Uh, both in the sky and sort of meeting, converging with the ground and fading off into obscurity, off into the distance. Uh, we've got a little bit of reconnaissance work to do here to try and understand what exactly is going on, so why don't we click on some things and uh, see what we can find. So this is one of the gravestones. You'll notice they, uh, they all seem to be equipped with the same little screen on them, which kind of brought me to a whole little bit of sort of introspective horror that I never expected to ever discover in the form of uh, what if in the future all of our gravestones have a uh, like a screen on them and then they all start to have errors and then all of a sudden the collective knowledge of who we once were and the memories that we had would be lost to the ages because of technology. Well, it's a strange thing to be scared about, but at the same time I guess there's something kind of disturbing about that, right? So that was uh, in memory of Ishtar09, the first android who learned to dream, activated in Paris, Mars, last seen on the outskirts of Lagoon Nebula. I uh, had more fun than expected. So we can take in all of the different graves, we can uh, look around the environment. There's also this thing over here, uh, which kind of busted right now. As you can see, it's going to throw up some weird uh, red gradient effect because it's broken. Uh, but then there's also this machine here with a, a big old 58% on it. So what this is actually a crea uh, cremation chamber. We can insert body, set temperature, and activate. And it takes note, of course, temperature should be set to 850 Celsius for human bodies, 250 for, I don't know how to read that, corpses, and 1600 Celsius for androids. For androids on the Gen 3 model, you have to set the vacuum to 700 rotations for extraction. Good stuff to know about. Uh, unfortunately, well, it might not ever come into play in terms of actual gameplay. I'm not entirely sure there. But uh, anyway, we can do a little bit more searching and wandering. should probably look at another one of these graves. I don't want to look at all of them for the sake of you guys having something to look at, too. But uh, there's quite a few of them scattered about. So this is uh, in memory of Katla Emmerich, born in Salzburg, Castile, died in Attila, New Thebes. She'll be remembered for her discovery of the Vanaheim wormhole. So you've got to be... Ready to read some pretty wild words here. I traveled to the end of the universe. I witnessed the explosions of stars a thousand times the size of our sun. I saw crimson clouds of pure energy gliding through the darkness of space, and yet no place amazed me more than the dusty ruins of old planet Earth. Isn't that a nice sentiment? So anyway, uh, this is what sparked me off to say that whole thing about the error screens on graves. It's pretty terrifying, you know, that uh, everything you once were that's left, aside from the memories of those still alive, is, is basically contained on this placard that no longer is actually literally written in stone, and you may just end up as a uh, fragmented bit of red. Well, anyway, let's keep looking. I've got this big old space dome up here that we can wander about in, and if we walk around the side here, yep, we've actually got a big old computer console. I should preface, of course, that I did play a bit of this uh, before we got into it, hence why I know about the strong language. Um, but yeah, so this is a, a message sent from our, you know, our host company, basically our employer, Deep Space Burials Incorporated, to, uh, who, to me, I suppose, intendant. Um, we are sending you a new body. The guy was a scientist, Reginald Sung. According to his daughter, he worked primarily on the growth of cosmic fungi in the fourth quadrant. The family of the deceased wants us to choose a song for the funeral. I uploaded two audio files to the Slahili device. Uh, so listen to them and choose the most appropriate. By the way, pardon on my pronunciation there. I have no idea how to, how to say that properly. And send me a message when you're done. I have to inform the family and don't fuck up this time. 
Who speaks to their employees like that? Come on. I actually thought that, if anything, the use of that strong language in this game, and not that I really care, I mean, I use strong language all the time in my day-to-day -day life, I'm not a prude about it, I don't really have any problems with strong language, I just think that it can kind of cheapen an experience that, for me, was coming across reasonably elegant, uh, even in its, you know, a little bit of a janky presentation at times, there are some, some meshes that have holes in them and things that seem a little bit off, uh, but for the most part I was getting a, a good sense of, you know, finesse, uh, nuance to this, and then all of a sudden we had this very coarse language, which, you know, it doesn't matter per se, but it just makes you kind of remember, oh right, we're playing a game a little bit. You kind of lose yourself a little bit when everything feels thematically consistent, and that didn't feel that way to me. Uh, so anyway, this is the device they were talking about as a ship goes over our head there, and look at that wild whatever that is. I don't even know. It looks like a, like the ship's about to fly into a glacier or something, but I think it's more to do with beams of light coming down from on high. So either are, these are our two choices here for a soundtrack. I also want to click on this device, too, because it does this. I don't really know what to make of this, but I like looking at it. kind of wish it would just keep doing that in different permutations and patterns with different color schemes and stuff, because I kind of like what it's doing there. But anyway, that's, uh, that's all that seems to do. So we can click on this, and it'll play some music. If you want, like, kind of a... An ethereal, mysterious sounding, but yet slightly bumping club track to go for this funeral. Well, this would be your choice. That would be sound 63UW1010. Or you could go for something maybe a little bit more, well, I don't want to say traditional, but, you know, 82PX00101 is not bad. Let's listen to that. There's a nice sense of reverence to it, wouldn't you say? Doesn't seem completely off base. I mean, it's certainly modern. You're not gonna hear a lot of people playing this on the organ or anything, but it seems okay. So we've got a note here. Uh, somebody's pretty upset, I guess, about the two songs that we get to choose from for the funerals. Maybe this is uh, not necessarily coming from me. This could be someone else. And I'm, I'm really enjoying this strange geometry that seems to come out of this world. I don't really understand the reason why it would ever look like this, but it's mysterious and interesting, and I kind of wish I could go down that tunnel and uh, see more. So I guess if I had any complaints, I mean, this does seem to be a little bit restrictive. I feel like I've seen all there is to see very quickly, uh, but there is still another thing we can do here before it seems to uh, end, or wrap up, or whatever. It doesn't actually end as far as I could find, unless I made a mistake somehow in there. So here lies Sa'al Duel, the first son of Sekhmet Duel, the Translucide. Emperor of the Sahal, uh, Sazal, and ruler of the Seven Halls of Vor. It's a very, very prestigious title, I'm sure. Uh, soil is now home for him, to whom the universe was a garden. See, that's kind of nice. It's little, little bits and pieces of very kind of poetic and nice little stuff going on, and then all of a sudden you get hit with this reality. It's like, all right, people are just saying awful stuff to each other for some reason. Okay, now it's a little X-Files, but... Uh, there's our company logo. Of course, this is, I guess, what you would see if you were flying in to drop off a body. I was kind of hoping this would turn into more of a simulation. Maybe we'd get to experience sort of the day-to-day -day life of this intendant character. Uh, see what sort of things we might get to do. You know, the various cremations, digging up lunar soil and things, building, you know, shrines and... Well, I guess we get to pick some music, so that's something can also take a look out. I don't know if I actually spent much time when I was coming down the stairs before, but that's quite pretty also. I like I like what's going on with this. The abstract visuals really make this interesting for me. I wish there was more. I really do. Uh, and by the way, in case you were wondering, we can wander around this way. It's not like any other secret doors or anything. It just seems to lead back around to the front again, where the title card just hangs in the air indefinitely. That should probably go away after about a minute or so, just to keep you back into the experience again. So we've chosen a song. A uh, great song. I'm sure the family of the deceased will love it. That being said, why didn't you fix the dysfunctional tombs? I uploaded the debug slug to the Sazal Healy device. Uh, do your fucking job for once. Okay. Well, we've got to go get that device. And you know where that device is? Down here. Well, not get the device. We've got to get the ability to modify the broken gravestones. Which is great that we can actually, like, uncorrupt them. I was kind of worried when I found this that this was, like, a sign of, you know, things to come. That this is how things would be permanently. That once this information's lost, that it's lost forever. Uh, but nope, we seem to be able to make some kind of effect on the world here. So let's look at this gravestone here. It says debug. 
Oh, I guess this is not a gravestone. This is more of just a monolith. <clears throat> so you can mouse click on broken tombs to put them back to normal. Uh, that doesn't change, by the way, in case you're wondering. The, uh, the device just displays that same little gradient pattern. Just kind of want to watch this ship fly into this. Does it do anything cool? It's a pretty cool fr framing shot right there. I like what's going on in this. Just slows down, and then it just sort of stops in midair for some reason. Let's go click on some gravestones, and this would be uh, kind of a neat way, actually. I think the developer chose to make it so uh, you could kind of wander through this environment clicking on things arbitrarily, but not be exposed to all the content. So once you uncorrupt the grave, then you can actually read what was there. And uh, it's kind of nice that way. You can get a little bit more uh, meat out of what is content in this. In, lo in loving memory of Ivan H. Fermi, founder of Atrium and CEO of Inner Space, he'll be forever remembered as a visionary who blessed us with the delights of virtual existence, knowledge, freedom, control. There's actually a little bit of a subplot running through this. I noticed from some of the other graves, or at least one of the other graves, somebody said they were like a conspiracy theorist, and they were positing that the world that we're inhabiting at this very moment as our character was actually just a simulation and that none of this was real. You know, based on the geography that we're wandering about in and the whatever this object is that we seem to be holding, maybe there's something to that. I don't know. I can see that being developed further down the line. It's sort of a narrative experience that if you don't pay close attention, you might miss a lot of. And I think that those are the kind of ones that really stand out to me as being incredibly interesting, uh, that you get to spend extra time kind of peeking into the corners and little, you know, folds of people's own little worlds and kind of put that all together. Or not is the other option. You don't have to necessarily find all the things that you find. So it's going to lead to, I don't want to say necessarily emergent gameplay, but slightly different gameplay for everybody based on what they take the time to experience. So that seems to be all the graves that I've noticed there that need to be reactivated. Let's go back up to the pod one more time. You can see what I mean now, or it seems kind of idealized that maybe the next step for this, if there was to be more of it, uh, would be that maybe days go by, certain events take place, we keep getting intercom communications or what have you from the uh, central server or the host, the uh, employer, as it were. And uh, maybe a little side story or subplot could develop as a result of the work that we do on this planet. I don't know, I find it very interesting. The whole framework of this seems like a really cool jumping off point for something a little bit different. Uh, so this broken thing is now a note, actually. Note of Intendant um, 00976443. G3 androids cremated today. 8 dreams extracted. Point zero one zero 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 one zero dot FDL. I don't know what that means. Uh, not very many, apparently. 75% to be delivered to Zala... I'm saying it different every single time I say it. Pilgrims, 15% to ES, 10% uh, to the UF. I have to believe that means United Federation, because UF always means that for some reason. And this 58% never seems to go up, no matter how many times you click on it or wait. It just seems to be stuck there. So, I feel like I've clicked on mostly all the graves. I don't really see any more around. It was possible that maybe I just walked by one of them, because they do kind of pop them into strange positions on occasion. By the way, you can't walk any closer than about here, so there's not going to be any jumping off the world into another universe or anything. Unfortunately, these stairs don't quite connect with the bottom, do they? Um, yeah, just in case you were feeling a little bit clever and you wanted to see about maybe breaking the geometry, there'll be none of that today. Wait, is there anything behind this? I don't think I ever looked, actually. <laughs> so we've got one new message... Yeah, so it doesn't seem to update. Uh, I'm probably just missing something. I want to believe that there's slightly more to see, but this is where I got to before and felt like I ran out of content to see. I could take one more pass through this, but I don't know. I don't feel like I'm going to find anything because I looked for quite a bit before I recorded just because I wanted to see quite how far this went. Uh, just because if I made an assertion that's like, hey, I wish this game had more little events in it or more stuff happened, uh, and then it turns out that that's actually exactly what happens in the game, I would feel rather ignorant there. Oh, I missed a couple back here, actually. No problem, let's just hit those. The other option is maybe I would have had to have uh, looked at all of the graves in the entire place. Maybe that would make some kind of meaningful difference to the story. I'm not sure. Uh, but now that we've toggled those, why don't we just go back one more time and look just in case. So I would love to see any more progress or something different just to get a better sense of the scope of what we might expect from this. Uh, the developers did make it sound like the game was complete to them. Uh, based on what they had written, so... I don't know, I wonder... Yeah, no, it still says the same thing, unfortunately. So maybe that's all we get to see for now. 
I uh, would love to know if you guys do find a way to get that to uh, proceed forward or if there's any more graves that maybe I missed uh, that were just kind of sitting around somewhere. I mean, that would explain why it hasn't proceeded because, you know, we've got to fix all the broken ones. Uh, but in general, I think this is actually a really cool idea. I think Conquest and the idea of being in, like, an intergalactic grave caretaker person, I don't know, it seems like it should be a bad idea on face value, but once you're actually in the midst of this, the environment and the ambience of it, it's mysterious and it's kind of intriguing in a way that makes me wish there was more to talk about or more to see. So, you know, if the developers ever see this, I definitely give you a thumbs up. I'm interested in your work and I'll be following your stuff from now on. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this little look into Conquest. I'd love to hear your opinions if you'd like to let me know uh, whether you think this is an interesting idea or what you would do differently about it, what you like, what you don't like. Any of that stuff is all useful. Feel free to have a conversation in the comments. I do still read all the comments, by the way, in case you wonder. I just don't reply to all of them, uh, but I do definitely read every single one that comes in, uh, unless they just don't show up in my notification thing. So, you know, every now and then on a video that's like two years old, there'll be a comment that shows up that's like, it just never toggles into the notifications, so I don't get to see those, but... I do try my best. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and play it yourself. Link is going to be in the description. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoyed the video. It does help out the series quite a bit. I'll be back again tomorrow for another episode of Indie Impressions. So if you enjoy finding out about a new artistic, original, unique indie game every single day, make sure you subscribe to youtube.com slash rockleysmile. That helps me out a whole bunch as well. And then you get every day's new video delivered into your sub feed. Hopefully, when YouTube is working correctly, which I'm told it's not right now. Anyway, thanks again for watching, everybody. I will talk to you all tomorrow.